Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I make games, play games, and everything in between. And today, I'm going to give you my one-year review of BuildBox. Okay, okay, so I've been using BuildBox for about a year, maybe a month or two, or I don't know. But I've been trying pretty much to be in BuildBox every day, other than like doing YouTube stuff, which obviously takes up a lot of time. Yeah, I've been learning the software, playing games. I've played over 200 plus BuildBox games. Before we talk about anything, I just wanna state that BuildBox is not the cheapest version. I do believe they have some moderate pricing plans now to use some of their templates. But if you're looking for a free version of making games, and I don't think BuildBox is, is the right way to go. There's this construct. I used to use Corona SDK. I have three games on the App Store built by that. I even did Unity. I still paying credit card payments on this class I took with a bunch of people in New York, which was great. Learned a lot. And I think that, you know, like, just like there's a million games, there's a million ways to make games. You have to find what works for you, I know BuildBox works for me. And it works for me because the games that I wanna make even before I started using BuildBox was minimalistic. I'm a minimalist. All I have is a backpack and a messenger bag. Like that's that's all I have, period, and like whatever. Like if you wanna make a game that has a lot of elements and a lot of things going on, then maybe BuildBox is not for you. The first game I ever made with Corona SDK was literally a dot that got bigger and you had to tap it. Like here's the fun part. I'm gonna go through the pros and cons list and because I'm a genius, I've combined them. So let's get started. The first pro is it's easy to make a game with BuildBox. I've played over 200 games with BuildBox. The con, you still have to do all the work. You still have to get all the assets, the sounds, the in-app purchases, the SDK. You still have to do everything. This isn't a place where you just drag an idea in, you hit a button, and then you have a game. Like, can I make games pretty quick right now? I like to think so, but last time I tried to make a game in seven days, it took me a month. Like, relatively speaking, this is huge compared to when I used Corona SDK. It would take me six months to make a game. And now I can do a game within a month. I like to think I could do it within a week, but I have not actually done that. But I plan to, and I try to, and that's my goal. Because again, my games are simple and minimalistic, and that's kind of the style. That's kind of what BuildBox does great with. So the second pro and con is that there's helpful tutorials to get you started but not enough to get you to the little nooks and crannies that you will find yourself in. BuildBox has a lot of great tutorials on literally the whole process of beginning to make a game to the end of a game. And you think that would be enough, but unfortunately making a game is complicated and there's a billion things that can go in between. And that's not even to mention your game is completely different. So the forums are helpful. There's a lot of people. The community is active. But sometimes you just can't find what you're looking for. I mean, I literally put stuff on YouTube, tutorials of things that I have figured out how to do, little hacks and little discoveries of making things easier. Sometimes you don't find a solution until way later. The process of making a game is almost like a game in itself. It's difficult. This is not an easy game. You have to find out what works and then you'll get to a certain point and find out that something isn't working correctly. You have to make changes, figure something out, maybe even change the whole, change everything you've done. I've literally spent a whole week on something and had to go back and do it all again. I picked the wrong preset and now that's the lesson that I learned. This is the process. So yeah, you just have to adapt and use what you can. And the third pro and con is BuildBox is ever evolving and being updated. The BuildBox that I began using, which was 1.7, substantially different than what I'm using today, which is 2.36. It's got so many more features. It has folders. It has the ability to select all the items at once. I mean, this is huge leaps and bounds from the BuildBox that I started started using and they just released BuildBox 3 beta just like BuildBox 2 has bugs BuildBox 3 beta has even more bugs but from what people are telling me it's amazing it's like 
And so Buildbox has a process of pushing forward and finding solutions along the way. If there's a bug, if there's problems, then they, then they fix it. This is tough when you're in the process of making a game because it's almost like Buildbox is not a complete version of a product and will never have any changes. Instead, it's ever evolving. So this is a pro and a con because you get the new updates. However, sometimes there's new updates. You know, so these are things you need to keep in mind when building a game. That being said, I'm like super excited to try Buildbox 3. I just, I'm trying to get some Buildbox 2 stuff done out of the way first. But yeah, that's my one year review of Buildbox. And I've made, I've made two games. I'm waiting to publish my second game because I have to figure out some SDK for Google Analytics and Facebook stuff. I, I literally don't know how to do. I know there's one video on it. Now, this is the game making process. Don't know exactly how to do it, but you have to figure it out and then put your game on the app store, go back to work the next day and work on a new game. So yeah, that's that's my review. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Check it out on playing Buildbox Games Daily.